Hello, everyone. My name is Michael. I work for the San Francisco Public Library, and my co-host Brian is here as well, too. Hey, folks. And today we're going to go over vaccine card and digital record tips. So the topics for today would be uh, we're going to go over vaccine card and uh, digital vaccine records, where to get them, different ways of saving them, uh, different ways of displaying your proof, and common questions you might ask. So vaccine card and digital vaccine records. So there are a couple of ways for you to show proof that you have gotten your vaccine. So the first thing is a vaccine card, which is kind of like the physical card given by those administering the vaccine. So if you like went to Walgreens or CVS and they gave you the shot, they should have given you like a paper card with your name on it, your birth date, and when did you get the shot and what kind of shot have they given you. The second thing is the digital vaccine record, or sometimes you might hear people saying smart health card and it is available from the California state website after you receive your vaccine. But sometimes uh, you should allow some time for information to be processed because it might not be immediately available. So I think uh, you should wait at least 14 days after your shots. But sometimes it, it takes longer as well. So your vaccine card, what is it? Your physical vaccine COVID-19 card is like a paper version of information about your vaccine shots, such as your name, your date of birth, vac vaccination dates, and type of vaccine you received. It is an official record of the CDC. And on the right-hand side of your screen, I have like a sample image right here. So it should look very similar to this. So it's a COVID-19 vaccine record and it should have all these filled out as well too. So your smart health card or what is the digital vaccine record? So your digital COVID-19 vaccine record is an electronic version of the information on your physical slash paper vaccine card. So it's gonna have exact same information like your name, date of birth, so all the good stuff. And it also includes that information as a scannable QR code, which is sometimes referred as quick response code. And on the right-hand side of your screen, you should see what it looks like right here. So I'm pointing to it with my pointer. So this is a QR code and it should say personal digital COVID-19 vaccine record and have a QR code right here and all your information should be on the bottom. And it is an official record of the state of California. So if you go to like another state, they might have like a different system and it might look a little bit different, but this is for California. So where to get it? So where do you get these proof of vaccination records? So for like the paper card, you would get it from the entity that is administering your vaccine shots. So like I mentioned earlier, CVS, Walgreens, or if you go to General Hospital, depends on where you get your shot, they should give you like a physical paper card. Or if you don't want to carry that around, you can always go to the Californian Digital Record website. So on your screen right here, I have the link right here. So it is my vaccine record period cdph.ca.gov. And don't worry about like copying this uh, address down. So we will repeat it later on as well too. So you will go here to enter in your information and to get your like digital record, which has the QR code and your information as well too. And we will go over that today. So the California digital vaccine record. So you go to the California digital COVID-19 vaccine record website, the website I mentioned earlier before, and I have a QR code here as well too. So if you know how to scan the QR code, you could use your phone and you could scan this QR code right here on your screen and it should bring you to the link, which is this link right here. And you should be able to go there and enter in your information to get your record. So if you have like a smartphone, you can use it to scan this QR code right here and go to the website. Hey Michael, I'm just gonna add that um, if you go to a bar or a restaurant, you'll often see something at the entrance that will show that QR code so that at, in real time, you can scan it and then show it to the person at the door. Thank you, Brian. So once you go to that website, you could go to that website on your smartphone or tablet, or you could use your laptop or desktop, and you should get to a screen similar to this, which is on the right-hand side of your screen right now. You should see some kind of form like this, asking you for your first name, last name, date of birth, cell phone or email, and Going to ask you to set a four digit pin code. So the reason why they want you to set a four digit pin code is they are going to send you like a link in your text or uh, like a link in the email where you have to click on and you have enter in that pin to get to your actual record. And once you set up all, all of this and you get the link in your text messages or in your email, that link is valid for 24 hours from the time you get it. So you will have 24 hours to use that pin to get your vaccine record. Let's say you forget to do it and it's after 24 hours, you don't have to worry about that because you always go back to the website right here and fill this out again. 
and you get like another link and you have to choose like another pin and you can always get that record again. So you don't have to worry about the 24 hours because you always do it again. And also, let's say if you get like another shot, but it's not reflected in your record. So you have to go through this process again as well. So it's not automatically updated. So here is a screenshot of what it might look like if you are receiving the link in your text messages. So you should say, thank you for visiting the state of California digital COVID-19 vaccine record. A link to retrieve your COVID-19 vaccine record is valid for 24 hours. So, and you should have like a link right below it. And you will click on this if you're on like your cell phone or tablet, or you will click on this if you receive this message in your email and it should bring you to your record, which should look like this. So it should have this title right here. You should have like a QR code right here, which is scannable. And you should have your information, your name, date of birth, and your doses on the bottom as well. And this is the proof that you have to show people if you, let's say you go to like a music concert or you go to like a restaurant and they ask you for proof. This is one way of showing your, your proof. So now that you know how to get this record, how would you want to save it? So you could download an image from the California Digital Record website, and I will show you how to do that. Or you could take a screenshot of it from a computer if you're accessing this website from a computer. Or you could add the digital record to an app on your smartphone, like the Clear app or like the Google Pay app, if you have like an Android phone. Or you could take a photo of a physical vaccine card, like with your smartphone, and you could show that as proof as well too, because sometimes you might not want to show or like carry your actual paper card with you because sometimes it gets damaged. So you could take like a photo of it and you could have that on your smartphone or tablet. Or you could take a screenshot of the digital vaccine record from like a mobile device if download is not an option. So downloading an image. So you would go to the California Digital COVID-19 website like I mentioned earlier, you fill out your information. And once you fill out that information, you should get a link to download your like COVID-19 vaccine record. So it will show you the record here first, but then if you scroll to the bottom, you should have the download options as well. So here is what it will look like if you scroll like further down on that page with your QR code and your information, you should see something similar to this. So on the left-hand side of your screen, this is an Android view. So if you have like an Android phone, this is what you should see. If you have like an iPhone, you should see something similar to this on the right-hand side of your screen. So I'm gonna start from the left. So you should see this link right here says download image. So you will click on this and it will download the, that image you see before on the previous screen, which has your QR code and your name and your birthday and your vaccine shots. And if you have an Android phone, then you might see this option as well too. So if your phone is compatible, you could save like a record of this, not as an image, but as like a part of the Google Play app. And if you see this, then you're co compatible. But there are certain requirements that need to be met before your phone is kind of accepted. And the minimum requirements is your Android phone should have Android version five and above, and it should have Google Play services version 21.18 and above. So if you have like an older version, like version four, or if you have like the play version like 20, then you might not be able to save it to your phone in the Google Play app and you won't see this link right here. And on the right-hand side, this is a view from the iPhone. So you should see this option right here, download an image. And you will click on this and it will download the image to your device. And normally, once you click download image on either one of these devices, the location of the image would be downloaded to like files folder on your Android or Apple device. And once you go to the files folder, you will look for a folder that says downloads. And this is where these images will live. So it really de depends on, but normally these are the locations, but uh, then you might have like a different version of Android or like an older version of iPhone. So it really depends, but normally th this is where they would be. So for Android and Google Pay, so like I mentioned earlier, you need Android 5 and above, and you need Google Play services 21.18 and above. So you, you would do like you would do before, you enter your name, date of birth, phone number, uh, like with your vaccine record on the, on the site. And once you do that, you see the big save to phone logo, then you click on that and you're taken to the Google Pay. Then you confirm and you'll be prompted to add to your home screen as a shortcut. So once you save it to your Google Pay, they're gonna ask you, do you want this as a shortcut? And you say yes. And then they will make a shortcut on your home screens where it's like on your shortcuts live. So you don't have to go into Google Pay, look for it. You'll just click on that one icon right there and it'll bring you to your vaccine record. 
So here are more screenshots of how it might look like to add it to your Google Pay. So it might look a little bit different on your phone, but this will give you like a general idea. You fill out all your information, you click on save to phone, which is the first screenshot right here. And once you click on this, you should see something similar to this in the middle of your screen. This screenshot right here, it says, add a COVID-19 card to your digital device for easy access. And once you hit continue, and it will be downloaded to your Google Pay, and they're gonna ask you, do you wanna add a shortcut to your home screen? And you say, yes. So this will make things a lot easier because you don't have to go into anywhere. You just go to your home screen where you have all your shortcuts. You click on this and you get right to your record. Hey folks, Brian here. Hope you're all doing well. It's a lot of information to process. So here's uh, what it should look like if you're doing it on an iPhone. Uh, you'll see that link. You might, um, this, we're using the same image of the link, uh, but that's what you get in your text message. Then you would see the second image and it would give you the option to download. So we're including that little image within the image of what it would look like downloading. It will automatically put it into the files folder on your iPhone um, in the downloads folder within there. Um, what I do on my phone, and, and then you would see this image on the right. Um, what I do on mine is I send it to photos first so that it's always on the phone. And um, then I make it a favorite and then I share it with notes. And then we'll see that on the next screen. So that um, square with the, um, with the arrow, that's kind of the universal Apple symbol for sharing. So when you're, uh, uh, when, when you're looking at the image on your phone, you, you look for that image on the bottom. And then, like I said, what I do as best practice, I add it to my photos um, app. And then within, and then I make it a favorite, which is that little heart on the bottom, which we're not showing right now. And then um, I send it also to notes. And when you send it to notes, it'll look like the middle one first. And you can see there, you're, you're saving it as a note. It'll give it a generic name uh, at first, and you can go in later and give it a name like I did here, digital vaccine card sample. But one of the key things to do is once you have it in there in the notes app, you can pin it. And that's that second icon in the middle with a, like a push pin. And then on the right, you'll see that's what it looks like. It'll be above all the other notes. And so if you want to easily and quickly access your digital vaccine card, all you do is open up notes and then it'll be right there and then you can tap it and you'll, and you'll show it. And once again, it only includes the information that is on your digital vaccine card, um, your, your name, your date of birth, um, and the type of uh, when and what type of vaccine you received. So like I mentioned earlier, screenshots. So when we created this course, um, there was no option to download an image from the California website, but now they did include that option, which is a lot easier, but sometimes you might want to take a screenshot anyway or you, you might wanna know how to take a screenshot. And there are a couple of ways of taking screenshots. It depends on what kind of device you have. So one option is there might be an option in settings. So you find the option in taking the screenshot within settings, and this is for Android devices. So you might see this, you might not see this. So it really depends on which version you have and what kind of phone you have, because there are a lot of manufacturers for Android phones and each company, they might have like a different way of like showing things or they might not have that option. But if you don't have that option, uh, a common way of taking a screenshot from your Android device is you would use the volume down button and the power button. So you tap on these two buttons at the same time and you should be able to take a screenshot on the Android device. But if you have an like, iPhone and you're pressing the side button, the vo volume up button, and this should be able to give you the option to take a screenshot on the iPhone. And if these options are not available or you prefer not to do these options, then you might want to download a third-party app, which allows you to take a screenshot. And you have to go to the, the Google Play Store if you have like an Android device, or if you have like an iPhone or iPad, you have to go to the Apple App Store and you just do like a simple search for like screenshot or screen capture. And once you do that search, you should be getting to like a list of all these apps that are available. And you will look through these apps to see which one would kind of fit your needs or if they have good re reviews or not, then you would want to download them and use those apps to take like a screenshot. So ways of displaying your vaccine record. So like I mentioned earlier, you might have like a physical card. So you could put that physical card in like a protective sleeve and if you could go to like a restaurant like a, or like a music venue that you could show the, the person at the door your physical card and this should be proof that you already have the shot. Or 
you could take a screenshot of your mm -hmm. digital vaccine record. So like I mentioned earlier, you could take a screenshot of that record with your QR code, which is like this, and you could show that as proof. Or if you prefer not to show the physical card, then you could use your smartphone or tablet and you could open up the camera app and you could take a photo of your physical card and you could save that photo onto your device and then you could show that photo as proof of your vaccination status. Or you could go on your smartphone and you could download your vaccine record to an app like uh, Google Pay and then you could use that to show your proof as well. So, so like I mentioned earlier, you could take like a screenshot of your digital vaccine record or like a photo of your physical card. You just open up the screenshot from your device. And normally if you use your, like your camera app, then it should be in your, your photo gallery. So you will look in your photo gallery to look for that photo and you can show that as proof. But it really depends on what kind of device you have. Because I think certain devices, they don't have like a gallery, but they have Google Photos, which is kind of like standard on like an Android device. And it, it should be saved there as well too. And once you're on there, uh, you might have like a lot of photos and you might not want to look through all your photos. So you might want to favorite your that photo. So it will stay like in your favorites section. So you don't have to look through all your photos to find that one photo. So you will look for the favorite option on your device. It might look a little bit different. So you might want to look around on your screen to see. It might look like a star. It might look like a check mark. So it really depends. But once you select favorite and it will be saved to your favorite section, then you have more easy access to that photo instead of looking through all your photos. So um, just released in beta, which means it's not um, you know, like uh, fully ready for prime time, Apple has released iOS 15. Um, and when, uh, when and if you download it to your iOS device, your, your, your iPhone, um, you'll be able to add this information securely, they say, um, to your wallet and health apps. Um, so that's coming soon. That would be another hopefully easy and secure way for you to display this information on your iPhone. And once again, it's it's only in like a pre-release now. You could download it and use it, but a lot of folks will wait till they get all the bugs out. Okay, so if you have any questions, here is a link to their FAQ website where you would go to, and they should answer like most of the common questions that you might ask. Or if you need further assistance, they do have like a phone number where you can call them and you can ask them. And these are the hours right here. But normally you will go to their website because things might change, their hours might change, and their website will have the most updated information as well. So I mentioned earlier, um, if you go to their website, you enter in your information, you'll get your record. But sometimes you might enter in your information and you might not get your record. So things may happen, like a letter might have been mistyped, so they might not be able to find you, so you will have to give them a call or you have to contact them through like another way and they will help you fix it. There's a suggestion from someone which we thought about um, mentioning is not only can you do a favorite, but you can create an album in photos and give it a name such as vaccine. And then it would only have that image in it. And that was, thank you, Tori, for that uh, tip. And Michael says, I downloaded the info, but was not able to save the QR code and can't seem to get it back. So what do you suggest, Michael, that he just do it again? It sounds like it saved the image somewhere on your device. So you might have to look for the image. Um, it, it depends on what kind of device you have, but normally you will look for like the folder icon on your device. If it's an Android or like an iPhone, once you look for the folder icon, you'll look for the download like folder within the folder icon. And you, you should see like a list of all the recent downloads. It might be near the top, it might be near the bottom. So you'll look through that. If you have like a lot of downloads that you have to look through one of each. But if you go through all of that and you don't find it, then you would still have to go back to the website. If it's within 24 hours of you submitting your request, you should still have that link in your text message or in your email. And you would just click on that and you should be able to get back to the record. But if you it's been over 24 hours, then you have to go back to the website and re-enter your information and re-get your QR code again. And it's pretty easy to do it again. In fact, uh, yesterday, I think I did it twice uh, in testing this out. And also when you're looking for the file, um, uh, on my device, it was a PNG file. So it was .png and it has a kind of cryptic gobbledygook kind of uh, name. It's not gonna say vaccine card, it'll have some kind of random or generated number on it. And uh, we had another three part question from Frank. Um, and he says, why would you use it in Google Pay as opposed to something else? Doesn't really want to use Google Pay. So once again, we covered options. We want to mention again how you can save it without using Google Pay on an Android device. 
Yes, so it is one of the options. So for example, if you use Google Pay, you have the option of kind of creating a shortcut to that Google Pay record onto your home screen where you like all your like icons live. So you just click on that and it will bring you directly to the record. But if you download the image onto your phone or tablet, and let's say um, you have like Android device, then you, once you download that image onto your device, you have to go through, through your folders, you have to go look for your downloads and that's where it lives. So it's like another step. So that's, that's one option as well too. So you don't have to do it in Google Pay, but it's just one option for you to consider. Um, but there, once again, there are other ways to do it. You don't have to use Google yes. Pay to, um, to save it to your device, to your Android device. Yeah, so if you have like Android device, you could use this, but you don't have to. You could just download the image from here and you will have your record saved to your device without using the Google Pay. So for me, I actually have in my notes, and one reason that one thing is kind of handy about notes is you can add things um, to a file. So I have my digital vaccine um, record on it, but I also have a photo of my actual physical card um, as well as I've also put a copy of my driver's license in there too. Uh, they may or may not accept it, but I want to have everything in one place where I could display it um, to getting an entry somewhere. So I think I have the instructions right here. Open notes app to create a new note. You hit the camera icon above the keyboard and choose option of scan documents. Then you scan the front and back of your vaccine card and swipe left to the right on the note and you can locate the pin option to pin it. So it will be on top of your list for easy access later. And to answer the question earlier about like how secure is this, once you go through the process, you add it to Google Pay, you should see a, a disclaimer page where it will tell you what exactly is you, your information going through, like what, who handles your information, and you can look through the details right there. And if you don't agree, you could not accept, so you won't have to use it. But if you do agree, then it will let you move on to the next step where it adds, you, adds the record to Google Pay. But um, on the short note, it, it's telling you that it's using that to create the record for you, but the record, it's being saved to your device only. So it's not being saved on any servers anywhere. So it's only being saved to your device. So if you lose your device or if you change uh, your phone to like a new phone, then it's not saved anywhere else. You have to redo the process again to download that record to your device. And like if you have more than one device, then you have to download it separately to each of those devices. So it's not being saved anywhere on any servers, it's being saved to your device. So, and it also asks, uh, mentions that you have to have like screen lock. So every time you try to open up like the Google Play record of your vaccine record, it will ask for the screen lock first before it actually displays for anyone to look at. And another app that we took a look at is Clear, which uh, is also used for travel. Um, and I started down the, uh, the, the road on that, the process, because I noticed some of the venues in San Francisco are using it to gain entry to, uh, say, a music show. Um, but it seemed to um, get a little, it was, it was talking about biometric information and things like that, but that's an app that um, it's free for you to use for this purpose and is supposed to be secure. But there are some uh, steps in, um, in utilizing it. Also, if the question about security was about the website, I mean, it is the official Department of Public Health for California, and they're only, um, you'd even notice how uh, it's sometimes hard to do this, right? So they are making it secure, and like F and the code is no longer good after 24 hours. So uh, we can't uh, speak for them, but it seems like it's a secure site to you. And once again, and that information, um, not, not only is it secure, but it's also a limited amount of information. It's only your name, your birth date, and the vaccination dates and what it is. It doesn't have other information about you in it, either in the QR code or, or there. It's what's actually on your, um, the physical card that you get. Also on the left side, you, when you see the link, um, that link, once again, uh, deactivates after 24 hours. And the one we're looking at isn't the full link. So I didn't put up an, uh, you know, um, the link that we received. Um, so that's a truncated version of it. So as you can tell from here, it's just name, date of birth and dose. So there's no like social security number, there's no driver's license, just only these information on here. Someone else was having difficulty, but I said that the, um, the pin is invalid um, and has done it multiple times. So I, I'm not sure what we can recommend other than uh, trying it again. And, you know, um, you know, sometimes there are glitches, but um, go through the steps. Uh, make sure that you remember the pin that you use. The four, you're going to set a four digit number and then um, and then that's the number you're going to put in when you get the link. And also uh, remember when you're 
on this page uh, on your phone or tablet or on your computer, uh, you're setting the four digit pin. But if you, you're using like a smartphone and your screen's kind of small and you're typing in the pin number on like your keyboard, sometimes you might be typing like a one or two, but then your, your finger might be hitting the number right next to it, three, and you might not be paying attention or you might not be able to see it. So it might be that. So once you get the link in your text or email and you're entering the pin again, and it's incorrect because maybe you're typing in like one number like to the left or to the right. So it, it's good to double check or it's good to type slower and see what the actual number is when you're typing it in. So this is once again, the same QR code, uh, which is the digit like um, kind of an advanced barcode um, that you that will take you directly to the My Vaccine record site. And then you can um, seal the deal from there. So right now, you if you have like a smartphone, uh, you could open up your smartphone's camera and it depends on what kind of smartphone you have. So I know for iPhones, you could open up your camera app and you could point your camera to the screen right here, to this QR code right here, and it should display this link right here, which you could click on and it will bring you to the digital vaccine record website. Or if you have like an Android phone, you might open up the camera and you might have to select the option of photo or QR code. And if you have the option, it's a QR code, then you point your camera to your screen right here, to the QR code on your screen, and it should display that link as well. And you could click on that as well. And it'll bring you to the, ne the next screen. Someone else asked, what happens if someone scans, uh, presumably it's scanning the QR code for the digital vaccine record. And the information that anyone does see when they're using the, the valid app uh, or device to do this is only the information that's on your um, digital vaccine card. So it doesn't have other um, medical information. So we went over how to get this digital record right here onto your smartphone or tablet. But if you want to print this out, you can as well too. So you could send this to your like, printer or, or you could come to the library and you print as well. And you have like a printed form of this record. So you don't have to have it on your smartphone or tablet. You have it on a paper form and you carry that around with you as well too. And it should be accepted just as if the original vaccine card. Is there any difference between a screenshot and downloaded image of the QR code? That is a good question. I've done both and they looked identical to me. When you do a screenshot of, of, the, of it, it sometimes includes information at the top and bottom, like, inf like you know, kind of uh, the date, uh, you know, the top of your, uh, the menus on your phone. So, and when it was downloaded, I noticed it didn't have that at all but the QR code was still crisp and the same, and the information was the same when I tested both ways. And also it really depends on how big your screen is. So if you have like a bigger screen and you take a screenshot of it, it might be able to take a screenshot of the whole record. If your screen's small enough, it might be cutting off like right here. I'm using my pointer right here. So if it cuts off right here and you're taking a screenshot, it might be taking a screenshot of just here to here. But then on the bottom right here, you might not be able to see it. So that will be, not be a part of your screenshot. So that's like one difference from screenshot and download. Once, once you download the image from the website, it will include everything on here. So all your information. So you're not worried about anything cutting off. So thank you everyone for joining us today for this session. I hope it was informative. Thanks folks.